Get the wind and the shakage. Hello, welcome back. Rapid Fire Season 2, Episode 9. Uh, back outside here at the Bethlehem Golf Club. Um, for those who haven't been here before Rapid Fire, you guys can fire away your questions. And whenever you come up on the side, I will do a better job this time, hopefully than last, of rapid, rapidly uh, answering them as they come up and we'll, uh, we'll chat some golf. So when you guys have questions, you pop them on the side and we will, uh, we'll chat. All right. I'm going to try and go through things a little faster this time. Jay's right on there, baby. Jay's ready. Uh, okay. Jay, find that I'm hitting at instead of through the ball thoughts to fix. Yeah. I'd say two, two initial thoughts, Jay would be number one, where you feel like you're throwing your arms and hands. Right. And so when we talk about the, uh, extending the arm video we did, you know, we said, hey, the club, you can feel like you throw and extend your arms at the ball, past the ball about 45, or kind of down at the target line. If you feel like you're more here, you want to potentially have a sensation that you're throwing your arms more 45 out in front. Now, a lot of where you feel like you're going to throw your arms is going to have to do with body rotation. So uh, the more turned that I'm able to get, the more I can throw out in front. The more turned I'm able to get, the more I can throw out in front. The less turned I am, the more I'm going to stand up and throw at the ball, which you can play with that way. You know, probably not as good a face control, a little higher dynamic loft. You might lose some distance, but um, you can play that way. So I would say increasing overall body rotation, Jay, on your downswing, getting your shirt buttons uh, to the target sooner, getting your left shoulder up and out of the way, pulling the hands up and to the left as you feel like your club head is uh, going to throw a little bit more 45. So that club is going to feel like it throws more out in front of the target as you're doing your rotation pieces. So instead of me being here, I'm going to feel like I turn my chest and throw the club at about 45 out in front. And when I say throw the club head, I mean, you know, literally throwing your wrist angles and extending your arms. A lot of that's going to be dictated by body rotation. More turn, you throw it later, less turn, you throw it earlier. So I feel a little bit more chest shoulder rotation and a 45. Uh, if you want to hit the ball, oh, what's up, man? If you want to hit the ball really far, I want to focus on mobility in your training. What body parts would you say should be your primary focus for increasing club head speed? Um, I would say a couple of things. Thoracic mobility, so your ability to uh, rotate your thoracic spine around itself and the ability to flex and extend your spine in these two fashions would be important. So in terms of distance, my ability to rotate my thoracic amongst itself is going to help get uh, tra turn enough to travel the butt of the club far enough. My ability to extend on the backswing and in the follow through of that same thoracic is also going to help add swing length and speed. Um, so I'd say thoracic mobility would be a big one. That's probably the main one. And then I'd kind of work from there depending upon hip, hip mobility, um, which also goes into glute, hamstring, quads. A lot of times if you have something wrong with like a hip or lower back, it's something above or below it that's causing it. Um, but I would say hip mobility, right, along with the rest of the body and the uh, and thoracic in terms of mobility. But there's some really good things you can do to help train that without training it directly in terms of backswing length. If you want to hit the ball and create speed, the video we did called, uh, if you search Eric Rorno backswing length, the one we did with um, Bed Pelicani in Nashville, where the wall's outside the lead foot and you flip the club upside down, and then you want to get the grip end of the club hitting the wall. So imagine there's a wall like right here up forever, and I want to get the grip turned all the way back to hit the wall. So you got to feel like you're turning a bunch, let your arms and hands continue to travel, like you're pulling your left arm up and back, like you're pulling your left arm in against your chest up and back would be a good one for speed. And then the video um, that we post on Instagram a couple of times with the speed drill, we did uh, last week on more ball speed. Um, which we'll do a video on here soon of learning how to get the club from a wider position, wider right arm, less hinge, and learning to press down and forward with your lower body as your arms and hands work up and back. Like when I do that motion, so my right arm is very wide, I'm very unhinged. As I press down and forward, as my hands work up and back, the sequence of events that I get from that is going to produce a lot of speed as well. So those would be some areas that I would look. Any thoughts about a pregame warm-up routine before you play? Yeah. Uh, the best thing to do, if you go on YouTube and search PGA Tour warm-up routine, they have like 20 where they filmed the warm-up routines of the best players in the world. 
they have like all the guys like Tiger, Ricky, Jordan, Brooks, et cetera, et cetera. And it goes through their entire routines. A lot of them doing like an hour ish. Um, they do it in different orders, but they'll putt some, see some short distance but, uh, but putts go in, long distance speed control, hit a couple of chips just for feel. And then really on the range, you're doing wedges for warm up, full swing, working through your bag. You're not really doing mechanics, just literally loosening up, seeing what kind of ball flight pattern you have, work all the way up to driver, and then usually work back down. So I do like, you know, a couple of balls to 30, 50, 70, 100, full swings with an eight iron, full swing to six iron, full swing to driver, back down eight iron, back to wedges, and then I'd go, I'd go play. But if you go search um, on YouTube, PGA Tour warm up, you'll see some really, really good ones. Robert, although my path is currently from inside to out or straight down the line, I've noticed that I'm contacting the ball out on the toe side, resulting in less than crisp contact. Thoughts? Well, for you, Robert, because I know your golf swing, uh, I would say that the narrowness in transition, so the too much hinge at the top, and then you being too narrow, too narrow in transition with your hinge here, getting the shaft angle to vertical uh, is still going to be the resulting factor for why you individually get toe shots. So not everyone you know, gets toe shots from the same, but a lot of times, a lot of toe shots, and there's different ways you get here, but sort of net out when the shaft angle is too vertical at impact. Like if I took my shaft like this and I just got it more vertical, you notice that as I get the club more vertical, the club head works in towards me, right? And so if I'm hitting a ball, is it likely that I'm going to hit on the toe or the heel from there? It's more likely I'm going to hit on the toe, right? So when I come in through impact, the shaft angle being way too vertical uh, is a lot of the reasons for toe shots. You want to feel that lower and more around you for you, Robert. Now, a lot of that, again, when you get too narrow, too steep, you're doing that to shallow it out. So it's really a result, um, a, an effect of you being too narrow. So I'd still want you getting wider first to be able to, uh, to correct that. Um, so let's do... Robert, my, Mary, you might have to hold this for a little bit, sure. get a little yeah. shaky. Uh, Rohit, I can play a standard push draw, putting the ball back from left heel slightly, but when trying for the high draw with high tee ball further up, I tend to pull slash pull draw. Any setup, I can play a standard push draw from putting the ball back from left heel slightly, but when trying for the high draw with the high tee ball farther up, I tend to, yeah, so you, what you should do if you want to go higher is don't move the ball up. So you can, you can tee the ball higher, keep the ball back where it was for your normal draw, your push draw, and then just tee it higher. So keep the push draw. So if, if, if you hit a good push draw with a normal ball position and you want to hit it higher and you're hitting a normal push draw, don't change that. Just tee it up higher and you can get your, your uh, angle of attack a little bit more up with it or hit it a little higher on the face to help it launch higher, but you don't have to move the ball forward. It sounds like without seeing it, of course, I'm guessing that uh, I just wouldn't move the balls forward so you can keep the ball back. Um, for those of you guys who are hopping on here and saw the videos today, we did launch our full swing, the ultimate full swing uh, blueprints, what we're calling it. Um, 36 videos. It's really, I'd say, the most Mary in depth blueprint we did. Everything set up, takeaway, backswing, et cetera. It's like we like literally redid our whole like swing program uh, that's going to go on the site. So if you are on the members here from cagornogolf.com, you guys will see that, already have seen that in the masterclass section of the site. Um, if you guys didn't uh, or aren't members here, you can get the um, purchase it. In the description, the link is in the description of the today's YouTube video. You can use promo code Blueprint uh, for fifty percent off. Promo code Blueprint. All members of Corona Golf get that for uh, as part of the membership. Uh, let's see. Hey, how do you change hand position to control uh, face for draw versus fade? So Yuri, I'd say the first thing would be uh, there's eighty four people on here right now. Probably eighty four of us should hit one ball pattern all the time. We should hit one curve and only one curve. Um, with all clubs. Now you can hit a different curve with your driver than irons, but with your irons, like hit one curve all the time, middle of the greens. Having said that, if you want to curve the ball or create a curve, there's multiple ways you can do it. Uh, I think you asked in terms of your hand position, uh, how do you change hand position? So you can change multiple variables here and there's, there's multiple ways to do this. Uh, let's say this is a stock setup here, face square, hands inside left thigh. Draw, you would potentially go ball a little more back, hands would stay forward, face would point a little more to the right. So for the draw pattern, I'd go ball slightly farther back, face pointed a little more to the right, hands more forward, and then I'm definitely swinging the club more from inside to the right and high past impact. So ball more back, hands forward, face to the right, swing more to the right. And that would be the, the draw pattern. If I wanted to go fade pattern in terms of the hands, I would go 
uh, ball more a little more forward, faces pointed slightly left of my target, hands uh, uh, still still a little bit forward, and then I'm swinging more left. So fade pattern, ball a little more forward, face pointed a little bit more to the left. Definitely working the club pattern uh, more left along my toe lines. So that would be my fade pattern. Those two curve pretty much how I wanted. So in terms of your fade, that'd be the setup pieces. For the draw, I feel like my club head's going to the right, and I'm being pretty free with my release pattern. So I'm letting my uh, right hand release pretty aggressively and kind of roll in the face a little. With the fade, I feel like it's coming more left and under, and the face is kind of more up towards the sky like I'm holding it off. So draw would feel more this way. Fade would feel more this way. That's one way to do it. If you want to do it with your arms hands, you can also just do it through setup changes, not change your swing at all. You know, that, that would be fine as well. Jamie, is too much hip rotation in the backswing a thing? Well, I, I, it could be. I mean, a stock swing in terms of rotation would be 45 with the hips, 90 with the shoulders. You could overdo that. That's not a big deal to me so long as your arms and hands travel far enough. So like the bigger your turn, you want to have your arms and hands travel far enough because on the downswing, you got to pair those things back up. Like if your body turns way too much on the way back and your arms and hands are right here, you do not have enough time to open back up before your arms and hands get back to impact. So that's sort of the deal. The more you rotate during the backswing, the more that means you have to rotate during the downswing. If you open the door 40 degrees, you got to close it 40 degrees. So, you know, the one benefit of not turning as much on the way back. So if I only, let's say I turn my hips 40 degrees, that means I only have to turn them 40 degrees to get back to square. If I turn them 60 degrees, that means I got to turn them 60 degrees to get back to square. That's okay to have that extra turn so long as that extra 20 degrees I turned, my hands traveled farther when I did it. Because then I can make that up because I have enough time. So time is really the main uh, variable there. Terry, assuming a neutral to steep backswing with a closed club face, what would be the procedure for the arms and body in the proper downswing? Assuming a neutral to steep backswing with a closed club face, what would be the procedure for arms and body during the downswing? So if you're good at the top, your procedure would be just all the stock checkpoints. So during the downswing by left arm parallel, hands be back in line with the right pec, right bicep. Knees are both reflex parallel to the target line. Shaft is on or just outside the ball line. Face is still square. You continue rotating, turning faces in place here like so. Continue rotating, turning faces in here like so. So <clears throat> basically, if you've got a good glove face <clears throat> and a good shaft angle, the downswing procedure is just everything stock. Hit all the checkpoints. You don't have to make up for anything. Um, if your club face got more and more and more and more closed, like really closed, like one of these, then you really have to make sure that you have the trail shoulder more external to get the handle more forward, like a Dustin Johnson look so that the ball doesn't go so far left. So the more and more shut your face is, the more and more you have to get the handle forward. You getting the handle forward is usually gonna happen through body rotation, right side bend, and external rotation of the trail shoulder, more like so. If your face is more and more open, you're usually gonna be less turn, more throw to square the face. That'd be kind of the main caveat there. Uh, Frank, thoughts on, oops, sorry Frank. Frank, thoughts on hovering club head instead of grounding in, it's okay here, Mayor. Okay, thoughts on hovering club head, until it gets windy again. Off ground and setup. Feel like my body initiates to take away more than arms, hands, and hovering. Thoughts on hovering club above the ground. Yeah, I think that that's fine, Frank. I know like Martin Chuck uh, promotes that a lot. Every Martin Chuck video I see, old school ones, he's always talking about keeping the club head off the turf. So when you're coming like this, keeping the club head up, and allowing that to initiate. I, I like that. I think that's fine. I don't think it's mandatory. <clears throat> I've had the club on the ground and played great golf. I think there's many great golfers who have it on the ground. So it's one of those things that I don't think the answer is yes or no. You know what I mean? I think try it. And if your performance, um, if it works better, then it's perfectly fine. Um, you know, that could be a missing link where for you, you feel the club head and, and, and you feel better with uh, how that initiates your backswing motion, that's fine. Some guys like to tap the club head a bunch. I kind of have a little waggle, little waggle, but then I'm down and then go. I feel the initiation more through my feet and my legs, but that's perfectly fine. I think for you, Frank, it's about that, those, definitely those follow-through pieces we talked about last time. Pat, do you move or fall into your left side while you're moving your club on the backswing? How early do you do that? Yeah, Pat, th this one's tricky in terms of comprehension 
Because what actually happens and what you need to feel like you do oftentimes are two different things. If you were to measure a golfer on like a pressure mat, you would see that they're making their backswing, let's say they're 50-50. They're shifting weight into their backswing, all the way to the backswing. Once they get to about left arm parallel, and then from here to the top, they're actually starting to float forward and that pressure is shifting forward during the downswing as they're finishing the backswing. And in fact, if you look on pressure mat, sometimes it's happening even earlier than that. But like, you're not gonna make a swing where you're like, all right, here I go. I'm going here, I'm gonna start going forward. Like, that's, I've never seen that before. You gotta still make a full backswing. You know, you gotta still make a full turn. So I think you make a full turn, get up here, and then you go. I do really like training, feeling the arms and hands working back as you're pressing down and forward. So in like these practice drills I've been doing a lot, and I really like these, you'd make a backswing. Once your hands feel like they're about here, you let your hands go up and back about a foot. And as you're pressing down and four, so you get to about right here, feel like your hands go up and back as you're pressing down and four. Then you lengthen out, get to left arm parallel. Feel like the hands go up and back, stretch your left arm in and up against you as your body goes down and forward. That's gonna create all the lag we want, the shaft lean, et cetera, et cetera. So I really, really like that as a drill, even doing with pauses. I like it so much, I'm gonna do one. See if that stays right there. So I would go here, feel this pause, feel this go up as I work down. So that'd be kind of the first one here. And then when you're doing it, and I hit that one bad, when you're doing it, you're trying to create as much speed as you can. And then you can just lengthen that out. See if I can do a little better than that. Here, there we go. You wanna create as much speed as you can from that little spot, and then you can lengthen it out. So I feel like you go to left arm parallel, Again, pull it up and back in against you as you're pressing down and forward. So left arm parallel. And feeling the same thing. And you're, I mean, that's about as good as I can hit it. You're trying to create as much speed as you can. That's a seven iron, it's like 250. No big deal. That was like 200. I hit that as far as I hit my normal. I mean, I hit that ball probably 190, 95. Um, so anyway, I think training those pieces in um, are good. Mayor, I think you got to go back. Training those pieces in are good, but um, in terms of actual swing motion, getting a full back swing with enough turn and depth at the top, um, I think is a, as or more important. Um, Ken, right out, I don't know if I answered that question at all or not, but that's my thoughts on that topic. Ken, right elbow flares out on downswing. Not sure if it's lack of width or arms not connected without uh, with body rotating from the top. Yeah, Ken, I don't know either. I'd have to see, right? I'd have to see a video of your swing. Um, elbow flares out on downswing. I'm not sure if it's... So if you're saying flare out like this, like your elbow goes behind you, um, like this way, so elbow points behind you, shoulder goes internal, shaft gets steep, you want to feel the opposites. So you want to feel like this part of your arm, by the time you get the right arm parallel, is straight up and down. So here's horizontal. Here's straight up and down. And when you do that, you notice your elbow is more down towards the ground. This way, this way, you can put a tour striker ball in there and squeeze that together in transition. What I would do is um, search, search my name in external rotation and you'll see a video on how to fix this. You would put these in and feel like you squeeze it in transition or just pull this part of your arm straight vertical and the elbow more down in transition. That'll feel like the elbow gets more in front of you and you can do that and hit. I mean, for me, my right arm gets more that way on the way back. So sometimes I got to feel a little bit more External transition. Some people don't like that. I, I'm fine with it. So you feel the upper arm more down, elbow more down as you start your downswing. And I think that's perfectly uh, fine to do. Again, I, I, I'm guessing on that one, Ken, a little bit as to what you're saying, but I think that's what you mean. Daniel, drill to work on swing path for driver for a draw to come more into out. Search my name and best drill I've ever seen. Eric Gorno, best drill I've ever seen. That's exactly what I'd have you do. Then you just have to adjust the sticks per the driver. Uh, that's exactly what I would do. You can do the back stick or the front stick. Either one would be fine. Scott, do you like the concept of slightly sitting on the uh, as the club comes into contact, or is that the same as keeping your pelvis even? Makes sense. Yeah, I like both of them. I think I think not everyone universally is going to feel the same thing. Depends on what you're doing, and even from a stock swing, some people like to feel the knees bending during the downswing. Some people like to feel the belt buckle lowering. Like literally, here's my belt buckle, like let's say three feet off the ground. I have no idea if that's right or not. And, and make your belt buckle literally lower. Some people like to feel the hips working back and away. 
Some people like to feel like I'd prefer to feel the upper body forward, like the JT video we did, or a combination of all that, you know? So I don't think you have to feel any of them. Some people like to feel the lead leg working more bent and around. Some people, again, the belt buckle lower. Some people right leg flexing, left shoulder and left hip working down and forward, right? <clears throat> All of those pieces would be in line with things that I'd prefer. So I feel like more here. I like to feel like my head's working down and forward, but that's because I have a real extension pattern. So I got to feel this just to kind of look normal. Yeah, that's hit good. You know, it's like, you got to see from down the line what your current pattern is and what you need to feel to be able to find middle with it. Luke, could a slightly closed club face at address cause the ball to go straight to the left? Thanks. 100% it could. I would, if you have that issue, take your golf ball like so, put a line or a stick down your target line like this. <clears throat> and if you struggle with the left, I'd take your setup and get your club face pointed, not right at it, but actually slightly to the right of it. So, you would want to feel like your club face is pointed maybe 15 feet to the right. Like if I was just hitting kind of a stock draw, I wouldn't have my face square. I'd have my face slightly to the right, uh, especially if you're struggling with the, the pulls. That's what I would do there. Rohe, read your video on handle low at impact. Does it help to have the feel of exiting left with the handle through impact to achieve a lower handle? Yes, 100%. The more left you exit, the more left you exit, the lower the handle or the shaft plane. So the lower the handle, the more left, the higher the handle, the more right. Lower handle, more left, higher handle, more to the right. Larry recently did a video on moving your body correctly. Could demonstrate the downswing move with your chest closed as you transition to your left side. So in general, normal swing would go shoulders turn back 90, at the top, they're turned back 45 in uh, by left arm parallel. And from this 45 position now, they're all the way to square in the follow through. So from this side, it's 90, 45, square. <clears throat> now, what you have to feel to get to 90, 45, and square depends on what you're doing. Golfer A might turn back 110. He's back 100. And then he goes through. That golfer's too closed. So I would tell him, hey, don't turn as much and then get open earlier. Golfer B only turns back 70 and then opens too quick right away. I'd say, well, no, that's not for you. You need to turn more and stay closed more. So golfer A and B, buddies, play the same group, need to feel two completely different things to get to the same checkpoint because it depends on what you currently do. So Larry, for you, you got to see, hey, where am I relative to those checkpoints? If I don't have enough turn, I got to get it. If I if I don't stay back enough, I got to stay back more to the 45. Now, what you got to, again, what you have to feel to do that just really depends on what you currently do. For me, I sometimes tend to open too quick. So I feel like my chest stays closed. I feel a little bit more as I'm working forward with my body, my shirt buttons point back towards my right leg and I have some more right side bend because for me, that keeps me more centered. So I'm feeling like my chest works down and forward, but it stays pointed back this way. That's what I feel that works for me to stay neutral. And that keeps my chest and uh, shoulders from getting too open too early. Now, back in the day, young Eric used to turn a lot and be too closed. So he felt like he'd rip his chest open. And then he started ripping his chest open too much. I'm talking third person all of a sudden. And so the feels had to change. For me now, I feel like I'm going down and forward. My chest stays pointed back toward my right foot. Like Rory, I look like Rory. So I feel like it just stays closed for a second longer. And we're talking like a really small period of time from the top of the swing, like the first foot of the downswing. So like this is happening in a short period of time. Let's see, Stefan, you suggested using an alignment rod to help get my hips open. Getting my hips open a little bit more, but notice my shoulders are still square to the ball and I'm flipping the club right after uh, impact. Maybe there's another message down here. Yeah, I'm not sure what the rest of that is, but um, so I suggested alignment around to get the hips open, getting the hips open a little more open. Notice my shoulders are still square. Yes, yeah, so if your shoulders are still square, you can feel like you're opening your shoulders, right? Feel like your uh, left shoulder pulls up and out of the way more. 
it's like your shirt buttons gets to the target sooner. If you're still flipping it, that could also be because there's other issues. You know, you might be, your face might be too open. You might be too steep and you're trying to shallow it. Like there, there's a reason you got to see it to say for sure. But as you start to work down, if your hips are open good with the alignment stick, you want to feel like your left shoulder pulls up and out of the way sooner. Like you're kind of throwing someone off your back. You can also feel like your right shoulder gets to the ball sooner. You can feel like your right shoulder gets to the ball kind of before the club head, right shoulder to ball before club head. Shirt buttons are pointed towards the target by impact, left shoulder up and back. You know, any of those can help with the chest and shoulder feels. Now, this is a good example. We just got done talking about, I get too open too early. So for me, those feels don't work, right? That would work if you're too close too long. You would want to feel those things. For me, I already have too much of that. So I got to feel close longer. So those feels are going to be a little bit different. There was a world championship of seven irons off the mat on Monday nights at Bethlehem. Being in business. Frank, Mr. Frank, how do I maintain extension of my lead arm through impact? You have to turn and you have to extend enough. So if I make a swing and I want to keep my arm straight, if I don't turn my body, there's going to be a point about right here where I physically, because the club head's moving, you know, my club is moving 90 miles an hour. If my club is going to keep moving, I stop turning. My arms are going to have to bend to support the club. So I have to make sure that I turn. If I turn, belt buckle and chest to the target, I can keep my arms extended forever. The second part is flexion extension. If I try and keep my head down too long and I stay bent over forever, there's also going to be a point where I can't keep my arms straight forever. I have to start folding them. If I extend, I can keep my arms straight forever. So turning enough and extending enough would be how you maintain extension of your lead arm through impact. Brandon, you know, you also could be bending, Frank, your arm through impact because you were too steep and you bend it to shallow it. Your face could be too open and you bend it to square it. So there could also be other things going on, but those would be the most direct things. Brandon, my iron shots always fly low without a lot of apex. Does that mean I would have too much forward shaft lean? What would you recommend for this? It could, could be a couple of things. Could be too much forward shaft lean. So you have too low of a dynamic loft for your club head speed. Depends on your speed, Brandon. You know, if you have a lot of speed, low, low dynamic loft's good. Uh, your face could just be way too closed. If you're hitting them left, you'd be hitting them left with that. Um, could be the shaft lean, the dynamic loft. Um, it could be you hitting it too low on the face. It could be your clubs in terms of shaft and the fitting is not appropriate. And so it doesn't deflect enough at the bottom. It depends on your, your direction. Let's say if your direction's straight enough, I'd look at those. It could also be because you're hitting too far down. So we got a couple of things going on. It could be the dynamic loft's too low with the shaft lean too far forward. You could be hitting them down too much on the ball. The ball might just be too far back in your stance. You know what I mean? If I saw a video of your swing, I can tell you in like two seconds, but um, I'd have to see a video of it. By the way, for those who would like to send a video in, uh, you can go to cavornogolf.com. That's where you can send your videos in to me for feedback. We also just launched our blueprint, uh, ultimate swing blueprint, 36 videos. Um, basically, all, kind of all my general checkpoints on the full swing. Coupon code blueprint um, in today's description. You can get that on Podia. Blueprint 50% off, I think, for 24 hours. Uh, JP. Eric, for greater accuracy with mid and short irons, what part of the swing should I focus on? By the way, I'm a big fan of your teachings. Thank you. Yeah, unfortunately, that's too broad of a question for me to say because there's just too many variables. I could think of 50 reasons why your uh, mid and short irons could be not as good as you want. Uh, that could be poor setup, poor grip, poor tilt, aiming bad, bad grip, uh, bad takeaway, backswing plane, wrist conditions, turns, tilts, extension, and then flip, multiply those by two for the way down, right? So there's just so many variables, JP. I would say for the best thing you could do is find a coach you could send your video to or work with in person and identify the top one or two priorities because there's just it's just too broad, man. There's just so many things that could be wrong. A good coach should be able to identify one, two things for you, and you guys can build a plan right away. Jim, senior, uh, hit three wood, 170, shallow approach, trajectory low. The ball falls from the sky. Would a steeper plane uh, help a golf ball. It could, Jim. That sounds like it could be a um, shaft issue, a club issue, like a club fitting issue. Um, if the ball flies out of the sky so much, that could be a, a club fitting issue in terms of the spin you have on the ball, the apex it reaches, what sort of shaft you have in there. I would rule out the club first, Jim. So I would get a good club fitter. Um, our buddy John at CagornoGolf.com is in West Virginia, Bunker Hill. He's really good or a good club fitter you know. Make sure the club you have is good before you start changing the technique up. 
Um, and then we kind of have to work from there. So based on just this, I wouldn't necessarily change anything uh, with, with, with just that. It could, it could be, it could be, it could be that, right? But I would check club first. Steven, love the Hovland video in his swing. Me too, man. When it comes to flat left wrist all the way through the ball, tends to travel low and left. What do, uh, how do we correct this? So yeah, let's assume that you bow your left wrist and the ball goes low and left. There's a couple things to factor in. One is handle location. So you have to make sure you get your hands forward enough and get the shaft lean forward enough. The more closed your face is, the more forward I have to get the handle to square it. If my face is open and I get the handle forward, my face is still open. If my face is closed, I get the handle forward to have a, a, a square face. That's how that works. That's how that works. So you have to get the handle far enough forward. There's also swing direction. So the more and more my face is tilted down, if you're over the top with it, you're in big trouble. You got to make sure that club head's approaching from low enough and inside. That can be some kind of simple uh, bucket drill, right? That can be a bucket drill with a stick through it. I would kind of cross off some variables. I'd throw a stick in and check your swing direction and make sure when you're hitting, you can go underneath the stick with that. I'd make sure the handle's far enough forward. You'd want to check your body rotation, make sure you have enough rotation, not flipping at the bottom. So all those factors, um, handle rotation, swing direction would probably be my starting points. Make sure the hand's far enough forward and the swing direction's from inside enough is where I'd start with with that, uh, Stephen. Lots of talk of casting from top, how it's not a bad thing done right. Any thoughts? Yeah, so we did a couple videos on um, how the arms and hands work and the throw motions. And uh, the, the short version is it depends on your speed. So like the less speed you have, you have a slower or lower club is through the driver and you want to hit the ball farther, you're going to need to probably throw a little bit earlier to have enough loft to be able to hit the ball high enough and far enough and hit up on the ball. Like if you're swinging your driver, let's say at 70, 75 miles an hour, you can't be having a lot of shaft length because the ball is not going to go anywhere. you got to have to throw that a little earlier. And that, like we talked about before, you can train in some speed different ways, but I'm talking about functional playing on the course stuff. The more speed you have, the more forward you can have the shaft lean and have the throw happen out past impact. Um, so that's kind of the short version of it. I like everything else considered, feeling like the club head is throwing out past impact. I don't like to feel like it's going on forever unless you throw way early. You might have to feel that. I like to feel like the club head's thrown out here for most people thrown out here right and so if you watch some of our videos you'll see more on, on that but that's kind of the short version make sure i can get all these questions um eric i used to peer most chip pitches but now i hit behind the ball i'm still shallow so i get away with it what do you think could be causing this my net technique on video looks same chips and pitches so the first place i'd look would be your swing plane so if you get too far from inside uh, with your swing plane then that's going to be why you get fats and thin so a lot of times fats and thins would be during your backswing, let's say this is your club plane, your club comes too far inside, and because it's such a short swing, you don't have time to reroute it, it comes too far inside fats and thins. So I, I do swing plane first, make sure the club head goes back, let's say roughly on your toe line, it should kind of work up the same shaft plane that you started with. If, if you draw a line up here, the club head should kind of ride right up that with the face kind of more neutral. You don't want to tilt that down as much like, like a Victor Hovland with the wedges. You want to have that a little bit more neutral. So shaft plane would be the first piece I'd look. The second place, which could go along with that, is make sure your chest and shoulders aren't cl too closed. Feel like your shirt buttons, if the ball's 12 o'clock, your shirt buttons are like 11. So your chest and shoulders are a little bit open. Club head is on plane like this. I would start with those pieces first. Um, if you search... Search my name and wedges and swing plane. We have a master class on all that, but we have a couple of YouTube videos from there. Um, search my name, wedges and plane. I would check that first. I'd bet 80% chance that it's uh, one of those two. Uh, Simon, struggle with a ground up to start the downswing. Any tips? Appreciate it. Yes. Simon, I would do the drill I did before earlier in the video and, and a video that we have coming out soon on this downswing drill. Take your setup position. Make a backswing where the club's about hip high. Keep your trail arm pretty straight and have minimal amount of hinge. Full pause. From here, do this with like a sandwich. From here, feel like your hands work up and to the left as you press down and forward. So your left hip and left shoulder are going to work down and forward as your hands work up and back at the same time. So it's here, wider, there. 
And as you're doing that, you're doing that motion and then you start hitting shots and try and create speed with it. Do a wedge, you wanna hit some goofy and record it. And I bet your, your, your transition and your motion looks way different. When that starts to get easier, go a little bit faster and start to add um, speed and, and swing length to it. Can early extension make cause toe shocks? 100%. So a lot of times what happens with early extension and toe strikes that like we talked about a little bit earlier is the shaft plane. So a lot of toe shots, not all of them, but a lot of toe shots come from a, shot, a vertical swing that's too high. A lot of times low will be like um, too low of one will be heel shots. This will be toe shots. So if I stand here like this and I do early extension, hips forward, chest back, the shaft is going to be on a more vertical plane. So to fix that, you would want to feel chest down, hips back, some combination of this, but you definitely want to feel like the handle's lower, like there's a wall here, and your hands have to work in underneath the wall, like you're swinging the club head kind of more horizontally to impact this way instead of this way, kind of more horizontally this way. We did a video called uh, Most Important Swing Plane in Golf that I talk about these drills. Those would be your sensation if you have early extension toe shots. You want to feel the club head working, releasing kind of more horizontally around you this way as your chest works a little bit more down. Like the angle between your arm and the club here, when you do toe shots, is fully unhinged. You want to feel like you're actually kind of maintaining some of that angle through impact. So you're maintaining this angle, actually increasing it as your chest works down. And that one for me is one that I always use because my pattern was always this way. And so I can feel like I actually have a, an angle here that I transport through impact and take some of the hook off and take the toe shots off. So handle lower, increase that angle. Yeah, that feels really nice for me because I need some more of that. It's another classic case of like, what should you do? The opposite of the issue, right? Whatever your, your issue is. Mark, for a right-handed player, how do you like the left knee to work in the backswing? So the left knee is going to definitely increase in flex. So I'll just pull this back. So left knee is going to increase flex and move forward. I also like a little bit of uh, internal rotation. So the left knee is going to just work in just a little bit here to aid in some hip turn. For the longer clubs, I'm cool with the heel coming off the ground. So the left knee is going to work down and in on the way back and then down and around on the way down. So left knee goes down and in, back and around. That'd be kind of a stock motion. Now, if you're someone who doesn't have enough backswing turn, I'd let the heel come up, let the knee come in a little bit to help. If you overdo that, you might feel like the left knee just goes straight down. It depends on what you need. If you're struggling with solid contact, I'd go more left knee just kind of straight down and work from there. But I like for a little bit more freedom, left knee works a little bit in as I turn and I unweight that lead foot. So I'm taking pressure off the foot a little bit. Unless I struggle with contact, then I'm going to feel like I stay there. I'm struggling with contact, I'm going to feel like I'm 60-40 on my left, 60-40, and I'm going to feel like I'm almost 70-30, and then pushing even more forward if I need contact. So if I need contact, I'm 60-40 left, 70-30, 80. So I'm kind of pressing down and forward the whole time. Because from there, I can help guarantee that my low point gets forward enough. If you're good on low point, you want more speed and height, then I'd let it go in a little bit more and let it come up and unweight it. Um, so take some pressure off it because then I can get more speed and distance. So it kind of depends a little bit on uh, where you're at with your game. Kind of more struggle with contact beginner. I go more down and forward and keep the pressure there and learn how to hit the ball really solid. Uh, let's see. Where should the elbow position be at setup? The right, the right angles. Some say left elbow should be pointing at target. So yeah, it depends a lot on your grip as well in terms of your left arm. I'd say a simple way to look at it would be like the pits of your elbow, the inner part of your elbow here. There's a term for that, but I not exactly, don't remember what it is. Yeah, the inner part of your elbow more or less should be pointed away from you. Now that depends on your grip pattern, right? Stronger grip, stronger grip, my hand turns a little more. You're likely gonna have the left elbow more at the target. So your shoulder will be more internally rotated, left elbow at the target, here with a stronger grip and then through impact you're going to feel like the left elbow stays at the target weaker grip your arm will probably feel a little bit more under you and then through impact it'll feel like it comes back under you that'd be more like a hogan style so more like a weaker grip ben hogan style would be elbow more in elbows uh 
inner parts of it. And then you're gonna have more arm, a little bit more arm rotation to square it up. Stronger grip, your elbow is gonna be more at the target. You have more of a drive hold, uh, sort of Kelvin Miyahira, um, current Bryson DeChambeau sort of, sort of pattern, even though he does it with a, with a different grip. Um, what's the best thought to generate maximum width in the backswing? Right arm wide and right wrist unhinged. So if I wanted to get as wide as possible, the club head as far away from me as possible, my arm would be the least bent and my wrist would be the least hinged. If I hinge it, I'm still wide with the arm, but the club head's a lot closer. If I bend my arm, the club head's the closest. So <clears throat> straight right arm, right wrist. Now, I can't get to that club here like this, can I, with my left hand? No, but I can if I turn which means the lesson there is for me to have width, I have to have enough turn. If I don't turn enough, I can't get back there with my left arm. So I have to turn back enough to get to the width. So wide right arm, enough turn would be the, the recipe for width. So I like that as, a, as the feels, like your right arm is gonna stay straight forever. And you gotta turn enough to be able to support that. So the right arm stays straight forever be kind of part one and you turn enough to be able to support that what i like is a drill that we did um, and i like it so much that we made a youtube video called my favorite whip drill uh, which you can search my name and favorite whip drill you put the bucket between your chest and your arms like this and you have to keep the bucket in between your arms and make a swing now when you do that look at how straight my right arm is see how wide that is See how wide that is, how wide that is. I mean, what a drill this is. So the bucket through your arms. I thought, I think I saw this first from George Gankus. So boom here, wide, wide, wide. This would be a great like fundamental drill to do. Bucket between your chest and arms and learn how to go from hip high, hip high. It's like the Milo drill we did where it's all body, no arms and hands. So search my name in favor with drill. You'll see that. That'd be the way to train it in. I would do that for like six to 12 months as part of your maintenance warm up. if you wanted more width. Struggling with pull hook. How about a couple of drills? Um, search my name and secret window, right arm window. We did a video with Ben Pelicani um, down in uh, Nashville where basically, now you got to keep in mind, I'm, I'm, this is blind guessing, right? So I can't see your swing. I don't know exactly why you're pull hooking. It could be multiple things. You want to feel in simple terms, like your right arm stays under your left arm for as long as possible in the follow through. Here'd be right arm over to left. Arm rotation, here's right arm under the left. So right arm stays under the left. So you see that window between my arms for as long as possible into the follow through. That would be one thing to do. Right arm under the left for as long as possible. So I hit that about 15 yards right because that's overdoing it for me. But if you have a pull hook, that should be perfect. The second thing would be keeping your lead elbow shoulder more internally rotated. So keep your elbow at the target for longer into the follow through and the back of your left hand feeling like it's pointed to the right a little more. So left elbow at the target, back of left hand to the right longer. That'd be feel two for the pull hook. Elbow at the target, back of the hand to the right longer. That'd be a second part that would take the hook off. So I would search the um, Secret window video we did with Beb Pelcani. We also did another video when we were in LA called um, How the Left Arm Rotates During the Downswing Follow Through. That'll talk more about those uh, second feels I just gave there. Jonathan, when you're releasing through the ball, is it like a swing or like a left side acting almost like a hinge? I would say it, it's neither. I mean, it, like it's, that's not black and white necessarily. It depends on multiple variables. Some people feel the throw of the club. Some people feel, sometimes I'm feeling like I never throw the club. Other times it feels like I'm throwing the club. Sometimes it feels thrown left, right, high, low, whatever. So I don't think it's, is it a swing or like a left side acting as a hinge? I think it's overly simplistic. I mean, you might feel one of those things and it <clears throat> works and you hit it good, but I can't say, it's like the question always comes up, you know, should I feel my right side or left side during the backswing? I got no idea. You know, like neither one's right. Like if you do left side feels and you shoot 65, you're like, no, whoa, 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 whoa. That doesn't count. You felt left side there, right? Like you can feel whatever you want. And, and, and I, I think, cause it could be either way. What matters is when you record it on video, what's the motion you do and how do you need to adjust? So yeah, I'd have to, we'd have to talk more about that, Jonathan, I think to <clears throat> figure out what you mean by those, what actually happens when you do those, et cetera. Ryan, really struggling with keeping my left wrist flat. Any training aids you would suggest or drills? Yeah, two things. One, 
uh, I would do a T drill. So the probably my probably my favorite one. I mean, I like the hanger, but we saw this little T drill from Andrew Rice. You take a T and you put it in your glove. And we did a video on this called "One Simple Trick for Perfect Wrist Conditions." I don't know how I remember these titles. And you put a T in your in your wrist like this. So point straight up. So when I take my setup, the T uh, is pointed towards the target. So it's pointed towards the target. <clears throat> During the backswing, if I cut my left wrist, the T's pointed up and towards my head. If I bow my left wrist, the T's pointed back and towards the camera. So what you want to feel is put the T in, start with it towards the target, make it point behind you. See those wrist conditions? That's about good right there, huh? So really it's pointed up and back, but you're feeling like that T goes from pointed towards the target to pointed behind you. That's a really simple one. So this is a... Perfect, one simple trick for perfect wrist condition. So T back towards the camera, that'd be one. And you can feel that on the way back. If you're good on the way back and you start to cup on the way down, then feel the T point back towards the camera as you start your downswing, that'd be a good one. The other one that's good is the hanger. And this is just the all time. So plastic hanger, <clears throat> um, this video, you could search my name and compression, my favorite compression left wrist drill video something we're gonna do some more on the hinging but you put the hanger on the side i'm not gonna go through the whole thing here so i can get all the questions but you got to learn how to feel like you're pressing the hanger pressing into the hanger like you're trying to break the hanger and you could do that throughout the whole part of your swing so either one of those two videos will help for the uh the lead wrist and you can exaggerate like all of us here if our new problem was your wrist was so bowed like victor hovland or calling me a uh, kawa i struggle with his name like, that'd be great. You know, like all three guys who played this week, JT, Colin Mi Miyakawa. <laughs> How do you say his name? Miyakara? Miyakawa? Colin, the kid from California, and uh, Victor Holland, right? If our, if our problem was the league wrist got so bowed, like, oh, my God, what a good problem that would have. No one here is playing back because our league wrist is too bowed. Uh-uh. You might have, not, have something else in there to match it, but it ain't because of that. <laughs> Okay, Anthony, how to improve consistency? I have a habit of hitting the ball off the heel. So <clears throat> two big different things there, right? So consistency and off the heel. Consistency, um, I think we all are inherently consistent. You might not like the consistency that you get, and your consistent swing might produce different patterns. Um, but consistency would be built through consistent effort, uh, the right practice routines on the right things over a period of time. So, Anthony, I'd say working with a coach, identify the one or two priorities, pound those down until you get them and practice the right way. You need to do wedges, warm up, mechanics, and grits. Hitting off the heel could be a, a multitude of things, unfortunately, not just one. That could be a setup thing, a swing direction thing, et cetera. So I don't know. I'd have to see your swing there. I would say a couple pieces to keep in mind uh, that I would uh, look out for. <clears throat> a simple thing to do, and some of these things that are like quick fixes, but they also can, um, you know, sometimes all you need is a quick fix. Like a quick fix can reverse engineer some motion. So one thing I'd do would be put an object uh, – outside the golf ball, so a bucket like this, and I put my club here, and I only have maybe a, uh, in fact, I'll just put it even with the ball. So I put it even with the ball, and I only have about an inch outside my club head. If you normally hit off the heel, um, there could be, a again, multitude of reasons, but I would do this object outside the ball and feel like the club head and shaft and hands are working up and left more through impact. So object outside the ball, hands up and left through impact. That would be a piece that I would look for first in terms of heel shots. But again, like I could see a video of your swing, like, oh man, it's this little setup thing. Your pressure's too far on your toes. You know, like I didn't really have to see. For all you guys that are here, if you don't know, if you're not saying it in every video, you got to know it by now. Uh, Cogornogolf.com, C O G O R N O golf.com is where you can sign up, send me your videos. I can build you a plan. That's C O G O R N O.com. My ball flight is very high, which tells me I have too much dynamic loft. Yes, it does. Maybe releasing my hands too much through impact, still hitting the ball quite far. So surely not releasing lag power. Am I so confused? Well, it, those two things aren't inherently um, one to one. Meaning, if you have a high enough club head speed, you could still be hitting the ball far, even though it's going too high and you have too much, too much loft. For instance, my seven iron speed is probably 95 miles an hour to 100 miles an hour. So I can hit my seven iron um, let's say with a neutral cruising speed, 175 to 180 yards. If I lower the dynamic loft, so purposely lower it, I can hit my seven iron like 190, 195. But at my neutral loft, it goes 175 at the same speed. And I can add a little loft and hit it like 165. So most people on it would say, oh my God, like 175 is plenty of distance. Well, it is, but relative to my club head speed, I could really hit it 190. So 
if the ball is going too high, you have too much loft relative to whatever you want, or you're not hitting down enough on it. So you could be, your angle attack could be too shallow. So you, that would be like, you're picking the ball. You would be that person. If you don't take any divots, you're picking the ball, et cetera. That'd mean probably too shallow angle of attack, maybe a little bit too much throw. So I really have to see to say for sure, it could be any of those things. Ball it could literally just be the ball too far forward. Maybe move the ball back. You couldn't need to train your hands forward. Um, it could be hit more down on the ball, right? Put a towel, a, a grip behind the ball and learn how to hit more down on it, hit lower. Or I'd say, hey, what happens when you try and hit your lower flight? Does the ball go the same distance farther, better or worse? Like, do you even need to lower it? From there, we'd have to kind of work through, uh, work through that. Uh, but I would say, hey, at your same speed, try and hit your lower shot, what happens? And then work off of that. I'm a big guy and have a short swing and need more speed. Can, how can I get more? I'm old and bad knees. So, you know, I think in terms of training speed, there's a lot of things. You know, you could train yourself to swing an object faster, golf or not, like a Bryson DeChambeau athletically training your body to swing an object faster. Swing wise, some things I look for would be swing length. You said you have a short length. So no doubt about it. Like when I work with people with their driver, I'm lengthening their driver swings like nine out of 10 times and they hit their driver a lot farther. It's just swing length. That could be from turning more, that could be from getting the hands more up and back, but getting the hands to travel longer. Like if your backswing feels like it takes one, two, three, four, I feel like your backswing takes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, twenty, and then make a downswing, right? Like your backswing, it's not going slower, it's just going longer. Like holy crap, longer. That would be one piece. It depends on when you're big. If you have a bigger, broader chest and shoulders, you might not be able to pull your lead in against your your chest as much as normal. So I'd have to play around to that. So oops, sorry. So training yourself to swing faster would be one of them. That sequencing drill that I showed before, if you watch back the video, would be another one. And really, Carl, what I would do is find the mechanical pieces that you need to do to make sure that you have optimized your mechanics. So you're hitting the ball in the center of the face all the time. The face is square to the path. Your ball speed's high. I would do those mechanical fundamental pieces before I go faster. Like if I want to learn how to squat or bench press or whatever, I want to learn the mechanics perfect before I start throwing weight on the bar, right? So same thing here. You got to learn the swing fundamentals and then you throw speed on it first. So I'd find a good coach. Could be me, could be someone else, but I would find a good coach, do the fundamentals first, then work speed from there. Um, Matt, missing piece for me is the close. I'm not going to answer everything again here today. <laughs> the missing piece for me is close forearms and impact. I uh, can't get my trail arm to have to bend enough and my trail shoulder doesn't look as deep as the pros. I'd love to hit push draws. So yeah, you got to just fix those things, man. Uh, trail arm more bent and your trail shoulder doesn't look as deep. I'm not sure what you mean with your trail shoulder as deep, um, but your trail arm more bent is going to be a, a lot dependent on making sure the face is square to close enough, having the trail shoulder externally rotated enough and have your body down forward and open enough. I would watch the video we did on matching arms and body, Matt. Matching, my name, matching arms and body. And then from there, I know I said this a million times now, but I tried to see. But I would say external rotation of the trail arm is sort of a must if you want it more bent. I'm not sure what you mean by trail shoulder more deep. Do you know what that means, Mayor? Trail shoulder more deep. Trail shoulder more deep. I'm not sure what that means. But let's say from here, if I want to have my arm shorter, I'm not going to have it internally rotated. I want it externally. The other thing you should watch is the passive. We uh, search my name in passive release. So you want external rotation here, not internal. If I want my arm bent, I got to have my body forward bend and turned enough. So you need enough forward bend and right side bend. So you would want your trail shoulder down and forward. Maybe that's what you mean by deep. Having the arm bent and the shoulder externally rotated. The more your trail shoulder goes down and forward, the easier it is to be to have that right arm bent. You're thinking it's bent here like Victor Hovland and thrown later. You also have to have a good club face to be able to do that. Like your face can't be open to be able to, to do that all the way. Um, let's see. Uh, Richard, love your videos. Thank you, sir. Big problem is still diving or thrusting towards the ball on both backswing and forward swing, resulting in poor contact. Big change. So the best thing you could do is the drill we did. It's called, I think, the only drill that's good for everyone. Uh, we did it a couple weeks, maybe a couple months ago. The I had the noodle pressed up against my head. Like there's a line here, and I had the noodle on my forehead, and I make a backswing stain on the noodle and a downswing stain on the noodle. You could do a wall at home with the same thing. There's no good drill I'm going to give you, Richard, that's going to be as good as you having feedback with an object on the front of your head and a video. So if you go down and forward on the way back, you need to feel up and back. If you go up and back, you need to feel down and forward. How much do you need to feel it? you got to give yourself feedback with an actual object or a video to say. Usually more exaggerated than you think. So I think it's the only drill that 
is good for everyone or something like that. In the thumbnail, you see, you'll see a um, noodle pressed up against my head, Richard. Watch that one. That'd be the drill I'd suggest based on that info. Look at my cell phone video. I realized my forward spine tilt is like 45 degrees. Is this a problem? I know some other videos you say optimal is 30. I think if what you're saying this way, yeah. So like if you look at a line, here's my setup position. If I'm straight up and down as 180 degrees, like a line up my legs, my butt, and through the top of my head, I want to be bent over roughly 30 degrees. So, oh, maybe we said that in today's video. Okay. So uh, I was like, oh, that's pretty good. So from here, if you drew the line up the back line and up the back, it'd be, you know, most of those guys are 150 to 155. So here would be like 145. Here would be 90. Here would be 180. You only want to be bent over like 30. So I'd say, yes, that is a problem. And you need to fix it. How you would fix that, and I, I don't even remember what we did in today's video, but I would say how you fix that would be you stand straight up and down like this. So just normal posture. Put your hands on your legs, on your, on your uh, uh, thighs, quads. Hello. Bend your knees just to the point when you look down. Your kneecaps just cover the edges of your shoelaces. So when I'm standing straight, I can see my whole foot. I can see my ankle. When I bend my knees, I want them to go to the edge of my shoelaces. That's enough knee bend. Now from here, if I grab the club and round it over a little, that would be like my setup. So I don't know if we did that in today's video or not, but that would be boom, boom, bend my knees over my shoelaces. And then from here, I'm gonna let my hands roll down to about the edge of my quad. Not my kneecaps, but about the end of my quads. That'd be about a 30, 30 degree jobber. The stick through the armpits, okay. So that's that. Um, yeah, I would say 45 is a problem. You need to fix that. Because likely when you start too bent over, you're going to stand up later. 99 times out of 100. How much does lead foot flare affect swing path? Lead foot flare is going to affect how much you can rotate your lead leg, your knee, and your hips, or your pelvis during the backswing and downswing. Most good players, I see the lead foot square to flared to about 5 to 10 degrees. Or the trail foot, sorry. Trail foot's square to 5, 10 degrees. The front foot is usually open more, up to 20, 30 degrees, uh, typically allowing a little bit more rotation on the follow-through pieces. So that would be like a stock model. Both feet flared, the same would be fine, but I'd say trail foot flared five to 10, front foot uh, a little bit more would be, would be typical. Todd, been working on my right shoulder, uh, working more external or facing down a little to shallow my swing, and it's been awesome. I was getting too flat and it's coming in steep on the downswing. Yeah, that sounds perfect. More external rotation, uh, with the face being down a little bit is going to make the shaft plane a little bit flatter um, or shallower. Richard, oh, I might get through these. No, I'm not. No. Sorry. Man, I feel like I'm flying. I guess not. All right, here we go, guys. Two and a half minutes. I'm going to go as fast as I possibly can. To reduce too much arm hand movement ta overtaking left shoulder in initial backswing, is it worth feeling the shoulder swinging start by turning? Slight squeeze the right scapula. To reduce too much arm hand movement, overtaking left shoulder in initial backswing. Is it worth feeling? Shoulder swing starts by turning and slightly squeezing the right. Yeah, that would be fine. If, if what I'm hearing correctly is too much this way, you would also want to have a sensation like your lead elbow points down towards the ground longer. If you don't let your lead shoulder in, uh, internally rotate as much, the club is not going to overtake the hand. If that's what you're saying, you'd want to feel the lead elbow a little bit more down. You can definitely feel like you're retracting your scapula, pulling your right shoulder up and back as you're doing your backswing pieces. I think you that's not going to be a detailed enough answer for you, but that's what I'm going to say for now. At least we can talk about that more. How much side tilt at address do you recommend? Virtually zero with a wedge, three to four degrees with an eight iron, 10 or so with a driver. Jeff, if you had to pick one or two, what swing keys are most essential to solid impact with the irons? The video we just did of the three pieces, arm straight to 45, hips push up and forward to parallel, right shoulder all the way through. Arms extended, hips pushing up and forward as you turn, right shoulder through. What is, now that's like the routine. What's the one or two swing keys most essential to solid contact is grip and wrist conditions, face angle, shuffling, but that would be kind of the other part. What's the best way to tuck the elbow for better consistency? Is it a tuck or just getting in front of the hip? So if it's your right elbow shoulder, during the downswing, you need to have to go into external rotation or towards external rotation. You also need some amount of adduction. So your arm, bicep presses across your chest some amount. So if, if you're too far back this way, you need to feel like your arm works across your pec, right? Some amount of adduction here as your elbow is working in front. So it's external rotation, adduction. External rotation, palm up this way, 
adduction, this one. Those would be the pieces you put together. If you search my name in passive release, it'll talk more about um, that. My head moves forward. So I'm using your video drill to keep it centered using a wall in front. That's good. I feel more tension muscles being pulled in my right leg to keep my head centered. Can you expand on this? Right now, with uh, 10 seconds, I cannot. Um, but I can at another time. If your head moves too far forward this way, if that's what you're saying, you need to have the head there and keep the, the head back. To be able to do that and still push your hips forward, you're going to need to lengthen your trail leg more than normal. That's what feels the tension on here. So you feel like your glute is engaged. You feel like your hamstring is different than normal and your push up before. When your head goes forward, you don't need to engage any of that, right? For me to keep my head back and still push my hips up and forward, you need to push off your trail leg. That's essentially why that's happening. All right, I'm gonna go one minute over here and try and roll through as much as I can. I gotta just go faster, I guess. What do you think of DeChambeau's grip and setup? Works great for him, for sure. Would be too weak of a grip for a lot of people. What do you think of the best chance to win Memorial this week? Um, I mean, I, honestly, going into this past week, I was thinking Justin Thomas would be good. Honestly, I was thinking that. I like him a lot coming back, um, especially after this past week. So I like him. Can he play that good after that emotional round? Mm, I don't know. That could be tough. Um, I would also say Patrick Cantley with his history, that would be a good pick. Jason, Eric on the flop shot. Do you think getting 64, 68 degree wedge with square setup is better? I don't think either is better. No, I think the old time great players did it with a 56 degree. So you definitely don't need a 54, 58. I think with a 60, you don't even need to open up all that much. You got to open the face more. So I don't think either is uh, better. Jason, I would say if you go get a wedge fitting, try them out and see what works best, but it won't be the same answer for everyone. Downline backswing view shows my head gradually getting lower at the setup. Is this an issue in the downswing? Um, average PGA Tour player lowers about one inch with their head during the backswing. It's an issue if you do it by bending your legs too much. So if your legs are here and I lower from bending my legs too much, then a lot of times I'm going to jump up too early. If you lower from excessive side bend, that's less of a problem. If you go too far forward, you're likely going to stand up and out of it. So depends on how or why you're doing it. Uh, thanks for all some tips. You're welcome. Any advice on how to get more height on fairway woods? Um, get fitted for more loft, increase your club head speed, and or learn how to be more shallow through the hit. So more picking the ball off the turf, not hitting down as much. That's a really general answer without like seeing why you're hitting it as high as you can. Could be terrible. Like I, that, that, that's really overly general. I would say the best thing would be make sure your clubs are fitted for you loft wise, then find a coach to find those one or two pieces. Um, Grant, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Show me an old style in the modern swing to see the difference. Not tonight. Some other time, though, we could do that. Mo most modern swings are old style swings. Honestly, there's not there's not a lot different. Mo modern swings not probably with as much of the extension piece as they used to, but a lot of the same um, stuff. Hitting too close to the hosel. Search my name in Shank. Paula, hello. Danny, can you explain the difference in feels of having a low handle at impact, avoid toe shots, but not swinging too far from the inside? Yeah, search my name, Danny, and most important swing plan. Most important swing plan. Inner elbow pit. Antecubital? Fossa. Oh, yeah. Is that how you pronounce that? Ant, antecubital. Antecubital fossa. Antecubital fossa. Does that sound right? Elbow pit. Elbow pit. Spin my hips and shoulders too much from the top, causing the hands to go out too much. Any good drills? Yes. Um, search my name and how to turn the shoulders in the golf swing. We did a video about a week or two ago. Perfect video for you. We also did a swing fix Saturday, our first one. Also perfect drills for you. Club across the shoulders, turn back 90, keep them back 45, put a stick on the ground, keep your arm in, feel your arm push in against your pec and your shoulders staying closed. And some of the feels I said earlier, right hand thumb lined up straight with the club for grip. Is that good or bad? Right hand thumb lined up straight with the club. Your thumb, right hand thumb should be on the left side of the grip, not straight up and down as much. I don't know if it's the end of the world. Brandon, head moves to the right a few inches during the top of the backswing. Is it better to reduce the backswing to vent head sway or keep the right hand moves a few inches during the top of the backswing? Uh, so it depends, Brandon. If you go off at two inches, you're okay if you come back down and forward enough. Um, if you don't come back down and forward enough, then I would remove the off of it. So you can keep the off of it, old school tiger, but then you got to move down and forward. If you drew a circle around my head and I didn't turn it, it didn't move off of it, you still need to work slightly down and forward of your original starting point. So it depends on what you do during your downstairs. All right, I'm going to do one more. Then we're five minutes over. Sorry, I didn't get through everything. I have a tendency to flip my wrist and stretch up standing. I'm impact. It would be vertical impact. Can I keep my wrist handled? So, Jason, uh, search my name and flip and compression. And you'll see all the things that I'm going to tell you right now in terms of where you got to get your club face and your wrist angles. So that's it for today, guys. Sorry I didn't get through everything. There's still like 20 questions on there. I'm going to try and go faster next time. I feel like that was as fast as I could go. So maybe we're just to the point where I can't answer all the questions anymore.
So but, one question a person? We don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe new rules. Um, anyway, thank you guys for coming. Same sort of things. If I said I need to see your swing, I've meant it, right? I do need to see your swing. You can come over to Corona Golf or find a coach in person. You can find someone to work with in person uh, that you can do some swing stuff with. That's great. We can help support that or just work with them or find another coach online. But find a coach to work with to give you priorities. Um, again, we did launch the blueprint, um, the ultimate swing blueprint that we did. It's really the most all in set up backswing down so kind of everything most common faults and fixes i think it's a great blueprint to follow we have a coupon code i think it's blueprint uh, on podia it's good for 24 hours for 50 percent off and then after 24 hours it goes to normal price is that right yeah yes. then it goes to normal price at 24 hours so if you guys want that um and then as always all the members of corona golf get that for free you guys should see that on the site i think mary put on there yesterday um but it's on there so thank you guys hope all is well we're gonna keep pumping out uh the video especially this week so if you don't get sick of them and then uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you guys next Monday. Thank you.